I'm going to make this a little more uh, generic to start with uh, and talk about how you uh, plan a woodworking project from scratch. And you might say, well, why do I want to do that, okay, since there's so many plans available? Well, that's fine, but for a good example is uh, I built two entertainment cabinets for my living room. And a measured distance from the fireplace to the corner on one side is 32 inches, and the other side is 34 inches. Guess what? You can't find a commercial cabinet that will fit in those spaces. So I designed my own. The sure, course, put, put on the microphone. Oh, at that time, I uh, just simply uh, sketched it out. So I want to talk about the fact that uh, you don't have to necessarily use a tool like uh, SketchUp. But, is that on now? Yeah. yeah. Okay. You don't have to use a tool like SketchUp, but one of the nice things about SketchUp is it makes it easy to visualize it, you know, and see what the actual shape is going to be, and you can add trim and everything to it. Whereas uh, molding trim, uh, put molding on something in, uh, in a sketch, a uh, hand-drawn sketch, is a little difficult to see it and visualize what it's actually going to look like, okay? But I thought I'd talk about the, uh, uh, that process to start with, and I don't know if you can see this well. I did not, I, I could not find my sketch for my entertainment units. I looked all over the place for it. The closest thing I have, and this is pure thinking uh, about uh, what you might want to do. It's in pencil. It's actually the uh, house I'm uh, planning to build in North Carolina, in Brasstown. And that's certainly not a final. In fact, I'm probably going to have several revisions of this. But the nice thing about it is you can just sort of sketch something, you know. And it doesn't require that you be an artist, necessarily. <laughs> the lines aren't straight. They certainly aren't in proportion and stuff like that. But I can see the basic floor plan. This is what one frame might look like, and that kind of thing. Uh, and I'll formalize that before. Uh, so that's that's the basics. But uh, in fact, if you're sketching, you know you're going to start with something like this. And if you want, you can do it in 3D. You know. But now, say this is going to be a standard bookcase, okay? Well, it's sort of you sort of start saying, okay, where am I? Gonna, what am I going to? do here. I might have a, a base uh, down here with a shelf running across here, you know, and, uh, and further up I've got a, another shelf going like this and so forth, and th that's fine. In fact, you can even put dimensions on it, you know, for purposes of planning. But like I say, how tall is this thing versus how wide is it? You can put dimensions on that, but you're not drawing to scale, so looking at that, you're going, okay, is it really going to uh, be pleasing to the eye, you know, and, and with these particular dimensions? Well, that's not the easiest thing to visualize, although some people are better at visualizing uh, uh, stuff in an abstract manner like that than, uh, than other people are. Quite frankly, I'm not an artist. And being an engineer, in the early days, you actually uh, had to take drafting, mechanical, what they call it mechanical drafting for mechanical engineers, civils, it was drawing <laughs> bridges and buildings and stuff like that. So that's sort of the uh, next step up is using stuff like this, and that's a little portable draft, uh, drawing board that I bought. I do have a full size one, but it's in storage. And it's got a parallel device here that you move up and down in a parallel fashion and you can use stuff like rectangles and triangles you know you can even use stuff like uh, a protractor uh, to if you got angles or you can use templates like this that's a circle template all right or even uh, if you like uh, perspective views or isometric views a triangle temp uh, elliptical template, you know, but uh, again, you're just sort of visualizing the stuff. You want to get into more complex curves. You need a set of these French curves, all right? 
In fact, these are useful even for laying out a complex curve on a uh, piece of wood. Uh, sometimes if you want uh, to cut it out, sometimes I'll use these to trace a pattern on a piece of wood even. You know, I, you sort of have to know what you want though. So you can take that as far as you want. And you can even do these things to scale with what's called engineer scales or architect scales. This is an engineering scale. Why is it an engineering scale? It's intense. Everything's intense. All right. Uh, but there's a 10 to 1 scale and there's a 20 to 1 scale, 31, 41, 50 to 1. This is an architect scale. It's in uh, uh, fractions of an inch. All right. And again, it's got multiple scales on it, but it's basically fractions of an inch. And an architect will typically choose some scale like one foot equals one inch and start using this kind of thing. And you can use all kinds of stuff to help things. Uh, there's a compass for drawing circles. There's a much bigger one for drawing big circles, you know, and uh, take that as far as you want. A uh, divider for laying out uh, equal increments on something. In fact, that can be used in uh, woodworking too if you're laying out something like uh, dovetails. You want to know uh, equally spaced dovetails, you, you can actually use the divider on your piece of wood to do that. Now you don't have to go to that extreme, and you can do something e better than sketching, all right? And I did this yesterday, and it took me less than an hour to do it, all right? And you, it's to scale, all right? And it's, uh, the lines are straight, <laughs> and I can start adding some details there, but in an hour or so, I didn't put a lot of details on there. I didn't put molding on there or anything like that. And that was done with one tool. Let's see if I can give you a better view of what this looks like. That's all you need to do that kind of thing. These are relatively cheap, see-through rulers, and they got a protractor in the middle. Inch scale on either half this way and metric scale on either half that way, so you can uh, draw in either English units or metric units, whatever you want to do. So you don't, the bottom line here is you don't have to use a software program. But on the other hand, there's lots of nice features to doing that kind of thing, all right? And uh, I uh, took the class, as Rob said, from uh, Robert Lang, who's a senior editor at uh, Power Woodworking. Ricky Alexander, wherever he is, was in that class also, sat right beside me. So. Uh, in fact, at this point, I'm not an expert at SketchUp, and uh, Ricky uh, probably has more experience at it because he went on vacation and spent his whole vacation time playing with SketchUp. He set out. To, he was telling me before the class. He set out to pull and play with SketchUp. So. Uh, I'm sure he will uh, correct me if I go astray here, but uh, in fact, one of the things that I've discovered, and it's a caveat with almost any software. Where's the power? Uh, it's right there. This one. Yeah. Any software, uh, and this is true of engineering software as well as uh, CAD software and stuff like that. You got to use it or you yeah. lose it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And the thing about uh, that was uh, I had not played with it since we took the class bad, until bad, bad. until last weekend. Okay, and then I started playing one. I went, okay, how do you do this? All right, and uh, gradually had to reteach myself how to do some of the stuff, you know. And we're going to just talk about basics today because we really don't have time. I mean, we we had a three-day class, you know, so we really don't have time to do all of that in a three-day class, uh, I'll show you some of the stuff we did. But to start with, uh, SketchUp comes in a plain vanilla wrapper, and it's really more intended the way it's set up when you get it. It's a free download, by the way, from Google. And the uh, way you get it, it's really more intended for architects. And architects use it to design buildings, and there's some really fantastic stuff out there on the internet. In fact, somebody went to all the trouble of uh, redoing the whole Roman aqueducts 
in uh, SketchUp, you know. <laughs> you can also combine SketchUp with stuff like Google Earth. You can design your own house. You can go to Google Earth, you can get an aerial view of your piece of property, and you can take your house and put it right down on your piece of property. Say, okay, I don't like it there. Let's move it over here, you know. So, uh, uh, on the internet, it's incredible what's out there. Some people obviously spend all their time playing with SketchUp. And they probably don't do anything real, but okay. In any case, uh, there are a number of such sites, and I'll talk about some of them before we're done, okay? What I have given you is part of the handout that we got in class. The front sheet here, and I'll get into these, is nothing more than a reference sheet for tools that are in SketchUp, okay? But going to the second sheet, it starts talking about what you need to do to set up SketchUp to do woodworking. And all of this stuff is not necessary, but it just simply makes things easier for you. By the way, the current version of SketchUp is uh, release 8. I have release 7.1 and I have release 8 here. When you download uh, release 8, it doesn't automatically overwrite uh, the previous version. So, uh, I was using 7.1 in the class, but then I downloaded uh, 8 later on uh, because there's some new stuff in there that's nice to have, you know. And before I get any further, this is the free version. They do have a professional version. The professional ver version just has more whistles and bells. I can't tell you what all it's got. I do know it's got stuff like ability to write out files in different formats, you know, rather than the SketchUp format, like you could write it out in a DWG format. What's that? That's AutoCAD. So I could take that in the AutoCAD if I wanted to, okay? It's got some other whistles and bells in it, but I can't tell you what all it is. One of them is it prints better. It prints better? It does print better. Yeah. I think it also prints build materials. Right? What's that? Build materials. It probably do a build of materials, yeah. yeah. And it's got some other tools in it that make things easier for you. I ain't worth 500 Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, let's put it this way. I haven't so far, and I've uh, got limited experience at this point with it, I haven't run into any limitations of the free version, okay. you know. Uh, it's, it's just incredible what you can do with it. All you're seeing here is an introductory screen, and one of the things I want to walk, uh, point out to you is this button right here, Choose Template, okay? Because you will see something here, I forget how they label it, General Template or something like that, and if you bring up SketchUp, you won't see all the tools and everything in that. But you can, right here, choose your template. One of those is woodworking in meters, woodworking in inches. You want to start right there, okay? Choose a woodworking template because it'll come up in feet and uh, feet or meters, and that doesn't bother an architect, but uh, you don't want to be designing your bookcase in, in feet, okay? Not that you couldn't, by the way, but typically, uh, you need more detail than that, like uh, uh, data might be three-eighths three of an inch deep, you know. Do I want to be working in feet? No, I don't. Okay. So that's the first thing here, and actually this is a personal template because I've personalized the, the uh, journal woodworking template, and that's why I, I, named, I named it Personal Wood, and that's just my name for it. Okay. So once you're done with that, you just uh, start using SketchUp. Now, mine's already been set up, all right, but I'll show you where some of this stuff on this setup is because it's non-obvious, all right? In fact, you won't see all these tool buttons, all right? You won't see this stuff down here. You won't see this stuff over here. So all you're doing is loading some additional tools into this interface and in fact, you won't even see all the ones in the top line there, all right? This is the way SketchUp looks, though. It's a perspective view. What's a perspective view? That's like if you were looking at it through a camera lens so that the front of this bench would appear to be wider than the back of it, even though it's the same width all the way across. Okay, that's a perspective view. 
and uh, that gets a little confusing sometimes, okay? Some of the things you want to look at, though, is uh, like view. You have all kinds of options here, you know? And under edge style, he's suggesting that you turn on and turn off certain stuff. Now, well, this was his suggestion, so Robert Lane, that is. Okay, you don't have to do any of this. Uh, some of it just makes things easier. Then you can go over here, and that second bullet there says preferences window. Do you see anything up there that says preferences? Heck no. <laughs> you have to go here and down here. So you might want to add yourself a note there. It's actually under window and preferences, and that's system preferences, okay? And you get a box like this. Now you've got all kinds of controls in every one of those items, okay? And he just suggests some of them here, all right? In fact, this is where you can save a custom, uh, your own template here. And that's, in fact, what I did was save uh, my setup and give it my own name, okay? And so it's listed there. But uh, there's a bunch of controls here, like under General and under OpenGL. You might want to be aware of this one. It depends on the graphics card in your computer. OpenGL is a graphic standard, okay? But certain uh, uh, graphics cards will su uh, support certain levels and others won't, okay? So if you're having graphics problems, this is where you want to go to change things, all right? The basics is the uh, true colors and 28, okay? Uh, mine set a little higher than that. I got a high-end graphics card in here. Okay, uh, so that's one thing. And under templates, you can see the others. Uh, you can browse for them. They're not, the rest of them aren't listed here, but there's a whole bunch of templates here, okay? And if you see a file like this, by the way, .skp, that's a SketchUp file. It's a standard format. So uh, that it, when you start to download stuff off the internet, it'll have that format, okay? Or that extension <coughs> to it. But in this case, they're just templates. You see engineering templates, you see Google Earth templates, architectural templates, simple templates, and so on and so on. So it's really just a function of uh, what you want there, okay? Uh, model info. Again, that was under window, I believe. Model info, you can take stuff and you can uh, click it on or click it off. I don't know why mine are shown over here, but uh, it, the uh, uh, projector must have rescaled my screen, so it was off the screen. But that's what this stuff is, okay, is you can drag these tools onto your window and when you drag one onto your window, it'll appear over here. Like I click on Entity Info, it'll appear over here, but you can just take it and park it over here, which is what I've done. Move it over here and park it. And it'll be open when you do that. So Entity Info would look something like this. Well, I just, if you click on the bar there, it reduces the window. You don't want all those things open because it'll take up the whole uh, right-hand side of your screen, you know. There's no information in there right now because I'm not doing anything. One of the things that you open up uh, is Instructor, and Instructor will give you clues as to what you're doing and how to do it. In this case, it's just showing you how to draw lines, all right? If you were to pick another tool, I don't know if I, since I don't have anything to push or pull, yeah, it tells me how to do a push-pull operation, you know? Those kinds of things are in that instructor window. So that's potentially useful because you might not remember what some of these things do. First clue, like any Windows product, put your mouse over there and leave it for a second. It'll tell you what that tool does, okay? Any one of these, just like any other Windows product, okay? That's just a, a slight clue, though, because it doesn't tell you how to use the arc tool. You know, it just tells you it's an arc tool, I think. Uh, also, you can set your units in this uh, info window here, uh, model info window. 
and you can uh, set your own precision here. I didn't set this to uh, KV units, <laughs> but 164th is pretty tight, okay? I don't know about you, but I typically don't even work to 164th, you know? And a carpenter would work to one quarter of an inch or one eighth at most, you know? So it's really up to you how how tight you want this. I find 164th a little too tight for me, and I'll probably change it, but I uh, haven't yet, okay? And there's some other uh, tools uh, available in there. So this, this first few pages are nothing more than setting up the menu to make it easy to do woodworking, okay? You don't have to do any of this and you don't have to, uh, it's not necessary you can still use the tools but some of these tools will not show if you don't okay now that first sheet is a blow up uh, of all of these tools and it just gives you an explanation of what these tools do very briefly all right so it's just like a reference sheet but typically i'm not going to go through any more of that by the way uh, uh, I think most of it's self-explanatory. You're just adding tools and uh, turning things on or off. To, okay, uh, let's see if there's anything else that there that I should mention. How did you get all of those uh, icons up that we don't have on ours? Under? On the sides. Yeah, it's under tools and... Uh, toolbars? Yeah, tool, uh, view toolbars, I'm sorry. Okay. View toolbars, okay, and you got a bunch of choices there. All right, like the uh, first thing I checked was large tool set, okay, yeah, and that puts most of them on there, all right, but there are others, like the measurements toolbar is there, which is uh, uh, useful, you know, and I'll show you uh, use of that, and that's one of the nice things about SketchUp is you can actually measure things on the screen and you can even take it as far as putting dimensions on the screen if you want. Super easily. Yeah. What? Super easily. Yeah, very easily. Yeah, and I'll show you a simple example before I'm done, okay? Now, you were, saying, you were saying on each of those, if you hovered over it, it would tell you what the tool is. Yeah. And then you could go to that help. The, the yeah, actually, if I click on something like this and then I expand my uh, instructor uh, menu, this is a push pull tool. It's showing me how to use it. I'll show you each tool. Yeah, right. Some of these are just zoom and rotate tools, so it really doesn't give you much information on stuff like that, you know. But the, uh, before I start on a basic problem, let me show you some of the things that we did in class, okay, so you can get an idea. And in fact, if you've downloaded files off the internet, uh, you do not have to reinvent the wheel, all right? If you find something on the internet that you like, you can typically download it and you can modify it if you want, all right? Or you can just use it as is because there are literally, I don't know, hundreds of thousands of files out there on Google SketchUp now. Maybe millions, I don't know, you know. Now only a subset of those are on woodworking. There's probably more architectural files out there than anything else, if I had to guess, okay. But if you've got one, you can simply go open it. Now this is what we started with, and this is sort of what I'm gonna demo because it's a relatively simple thing to do. It's just telling me that was an older version, you know. And I'm using a, uh, by the way, if you're going to use a mouse, you want to use a mouse uh, rather than a touchpad, and you want a mouse with a center wheel. Why? Makes it easy to zoom and rotate. That's why. Okay? Because all I'm doing is pressing that center wheel and rotating. I don't have to go up here and pick the rotate tool and then come down here and rotate. Okay? And I can even pan, uh, the little hand up here is pan, so if I wanted to pan, by using the toolbar, I'd have to go up there and pick the hand, okay? And there are also uh, shortcuts. Say if I'm in Zoom, okay, that's a Zoom tool. I can also just, and I uh, can give you some of these, but uh, like I type H, puts me right in pan, all right? So there's all kinds of ways to get 
to the function that you want. Like the push-pull tool is M, you know. If I want to use a push-pull tool, I can just type M on the keyboard and it brings it right up. So there's all kinds of short keyboard shortcuts too. If you used a lot of uh, software, and I do this in engineering software all the time, especially CAD programs, they usually have a reference list like this with all your shortcuts on it, you know, because you typically aren't going there and picking an icon. You're typically doing Control E or something like that to get to the tool that you want instead of hunting around and all that garbage to find your icon, you know. Is there a list of keyboard shortcuts somewhere that you know of? Uh, yeah, I think it's in the documentation. And while I'm on that topic, I'm glad you asked me because I forgot. It's on the front sheet. Is it on the front sheet? Oh, yeah. <laughs> right there. <laughs> uh, Robert Lane sells this. It's 30 bucks, and I just printed a copy. And you're welcome to look at it. It's a PDF format. And go goes through all the functionality of all these tools. It's, it comes on a CD. He, pay, he charges 30 bucks for it. It's like having a class, you know. It's well worth it. Oh, yeah, it's well worth it. And uh, you can look at it on the screen, so you don't have to print it, okay? I don't know about you, but I'm still a little old-fashioned. I like printed copies because I can tend to find things in a printed copy faster, <laughs> unless it's got a real good search engine, okay? And uh, it's, it's pretty good uh, because it's got a table of contents up front that has hypertext links in it. And if you click on one of these, it'll jump right to where that's at in the PDF file. Okay, so you can do it online. What? Do what? Oh, okay. <laughs> Bob has some experience with uh, SketchUp also, so. And uh, unlike, Ricky uh, does. Uh, unlike Jerry, I uh, was trying to find information about SketchUp. So I went for one of the dummies books. Then I found out in the introduction of the book that this dude, the dude that wrote the book, has a website. This is Adan, A-I, D-A-N, Chopra. I'll put that up on the board in a minute. But the nifty thing about his stuff is that you select it and it will take you through uh, animation and whatnot to do what Jerry's doing up here with the keyboard and mouse, which is a big, big help when you can't figure out what the text is trying to tell you to do. Yeah, sometimes this stuff is uh, a little non-obvious, but any program that's got this much capability, it's, it's not always easy to tell somebody, you know, the exact steps to do something. Yeah, Jimmy? I hate to slow you down, but I was trying to find the front page when you were telling us where to click on the woodworking. Yeah. Where did you click on woodworking? It was uh, that startup window. Startup. Remember when I started the program up, it came up with a startup window? Yeah, we don't have that. And there was a bar there that says choose template. Okay. Yeah, I know 7.1 and 8 has have it. It's a little, just a little bar that you click on that says choose template. And you'll see all of them listed there, it's all the standard ones. It's on the template. Okay. Yeah. It's on the screen. It's on the screen. Yeah, but just to show you a, a couple of tools here before I get into something, here's a ro rotate tool, and this thing, it took me a while to figure out how to use it. See the protractor there? Well, it's going to rotate in that plane if I pick that plane, okay, but I can move this thing around, okay, and you see it flip over, and I can literally pick a point, and I'll talk about how you do this later on. See, it says endpoint and component. It's telling me where I'm located. All right, I pick that, and down on the bottom of the screen, if you look right down, well, you might not be able to see that. It says align the bottom of the protractor. Okay, so I'll come over here and I'll pick a second point. You might not be able to see that, but that's a point, endpoint on component. All right. Well, I picked the wrong component. It's rotating the back. I meant to rotate the top. It's actually rotating the back of the uh, box. See what it's doing? 
Yeah, you can open it up or close things like that, okay, so you, that you can see inside, like a cabinet door. You could pick on your cabinet door and you could open your door so you can see the interior of the cabinet, those kinds of things, you know. So there's all kinds of nice little tools like that. Which, yeah, tool, which tool was that you started That's with? this one right here. A little rotate thing. Looks like two arrows. But you get that protractor and the... the See, I, I just picked the wrong point here, all right? Uh, so, well, I mean, in this case, you can just redo it, all right? Which I will try to do. There you go. Okay? So that I can... Uh, you can record those motions, too. Yeah. Uh, that I don't know how to do, but I was told, uh, in fact, uh, that's what Bob was talking about uh, on this website. The guy is dynamically doing this stuff. For you, you know, you can capture it, do a screen capture, and but in this case, I'm just looking inside the box. Yeah. So you just went out and got that box, effectively. No, I made this. Oh, okay. Yeah, made it from scratch, but I mean, not that that's a big deal. Okay. Uh, just real quickly, uh, I don't want to spend too much time on that. I just want to show you some of these tools. Okay. I just go uh, new says, do you want to change these, uh, save these changes? I said, no. I'm just going to open another one here so you'll see, and I'm not going to spend a lot of time on it. And by the way, there's always a little preview over here. You see this little window here? It just previews what you're going to open. Right. Uh, this is sort of the ultimate in cabinet planning. <laughs> not only do I have my cabinet here with an assembly, but I've uh, copied pieces and moved them over so that I can see individual assemblies. And then I've also put dimensions on them, like this is a door frame for one of these doors. Okay, and this is a side. Actually, I got both sides shown there. And this is molding that's going to go on the base, and this is molding that's going to go on the top. And this is one of the top doors. This is one of the bottom door doors. That's one of the top doors. And this is a face frame. So you can take this uh, kind of as far as you want, okay, as far as planning purposes are concerned, because concern, I can make a cut list right out of this. Now the pro version will make a cut list for you, okay, but uh, personally this is all I need. I can actually print this so I can have a copy right in front of me, you know, those kinds of things. Just one other one, okay. And uh, quite frankly, both Ricky and I agreed on this. Uh, by the way, I just accidentally drew a line. I didn't mean to. How do you get rid of stuff like that? Click on it, see it's highlighted? Hit the delete key. Very simple. By the way, if you delete a face of something, it'll look hollow. These are not 3D solids, they're just surrounded by faces. They're actually hollow inside, okay? So it's not a 3D solid problem, uh, program. Yeah, Bob, you had a question? The dimensions, are they true dimensions that will automatically change as you drag the size of the shape? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And in fact, you don't even have to put them on because there's actually a, a tape measure tool over here, all right? And if I just want to know, I click on one point and I drag it over to another point like here. And if you look down here, you'll see that dimension, okay, on the screen. Now that's not actually going to make a dimension out of that, but I can actually measure points. In fact, if I wanted then want to know uh, what's the distance up to here, in fact, you see in the little box it's even telling me that that's four inches. Okay. Ricky and I agreed that it's faster to cut the dovetails than it is to draw. <laughs> I say this too about the measurement tool and the, the uh, dimension tool. When you're, I'm sorry, I don't mean to upset. I've worked with it a good bit on vacation. Was drawing a uh, an island for my son. You really have to zoom in to make sure you get the measurement starting and stop point on that measurement tool yeah. where you think you get it because you'll put it on the inside of part of the joinery and the outside of part of the joinery and you'll get this funky measurement. You're like, what did I draw? What's wrong with this? And stuff. So you really have yeah. to, to zoom in, you kind of 
do that See, a lot. You zoom in a lot and zoom out a lot. Yeah, actually, uh, this was highly recommended to us in class, and I've found out it's really true. It's much easier to pick stuff when you zoom way in, okay? Especially uh, like that tape measure, you know, if, you, if I hold it there, you see, it tells me that's the end point of that line, and it puts a little dot there, okay? If that's what I really want, then I click on it, and then I move it, okay? But if I were to accidentally go over here somewhere, it's going to give me a different dimension. If I zoom too far out, I might be picking that point and not realizing that I'm going to be picking that point. Right. In this example, it's pretty easy to see. Yeah. But, uh, when you're really doing stupid stuff like I was doing, trying to draw every little tiny detail in there, it's easy to make mistakes. Yeah. And it's good to use that measurement tool a lot to make sure you've drawn what you think you've drawn. And this is a good example of why I don't like the increment set to 164. I'm not going to cut that side to 1964, right. so I'm sorry. <laughs> 30 seconds. Yeah, a 30 second or a 16th, you know. Mm -hmm. And that's part of my problem with setting that to 164. Maybe Robert Lane likes 164, but I found it too touchy, you know. And I'm certainly not going to cut a drawer side to 10 and 1964, you know. Yeah. Mm. The so. problem with going any more than the 30 second, though, is by was not three quarter. So. If you want to really know the dimension between two points of a dado for a plywood that's what is it, 15, 30 seconds or whatever, uh, then you got to go with 30 seconds. It creates all, all kinds of problems. So I wish the hell they would go back to three quarter. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's start actually using this, this tool, okay? This is typically how it comes up, and what I'm in is the drawing line drawing tool. And that cursor, the uh, cursor tells me where I'm at. Now, when you start drawing, if I draw, starts drawing lines here, they're going to be on this plane down here where you see the red axis and the green axis. It automatically anchors stuff in that plane, sort of the zero plane, if you will, okay? So you, you can draw on one of these other planes, but you have to sort of move up there and make sure that it's picked up on the fact that you want to draw on one of those planes, okay? But I don't find this uh, uh, bad. I, I uh, click a starting point, and you don't have to start on an axis. Uh, in fact, typically you don't need to. And by the way, when you're drawing that line, I don't know if you can see that well, it's red. What's that telling me? It's parallel to this red axis. Hmm. Because if I go off, it won't be red anymore. Okay. So if I come back down here and I see it highlighting red, I know it's parallel to that red axis. Why is that important? If you're drawing uh, rectangles or squares, you'd like them to be parallel to those axes because it makes things a whole lot easier. But nothing says that you have to work in rectangles and squares, you know? Uh, but uh, this is a basic tool, okay? Now, it tells me 17 and 49 64 long. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I don't want that, but I haven't clicked the second time. I can type in something like 12, hit the enter key, and it's 12 inches long. All right. Now here's where zooming starts to help, because it was zoomed so far out that I can't see that very well. All right. Now I'm going to draw a second point here and see it's green. It's black unless I move it over till I'm parallel to the green axis and it's green. Okay. And it says own green axis. And now that's 4 and 21 64ths, okay? I don't want that either. As a matter of fact, I'm going to make it 3 quarters. I, type, I can actually do this. Type 3 slash 4. All right? And hit enter. Why? Because my board's going to be 3 quarters of an inch thick. All right? And this is not the only way to do it, but here I'm going to go up here, okay? And, it's, and again, getting this endpoint precise is a lot easier if you start blowing up. And all I'm doing is using that center wheel, okay, to line that up, okay, so that when I click on that and then I come over here and click on this endpoint, lo and behold, it creates a rectangle for me, all right? Did it snap a 12 inch 
Yeah, it automatically did, but that's the reason I zoomed in, so I was sure I was picking. But did it, how did you know it was snapping the 12 inches? It was, it was telling me at the bottom of the screen. I'll tell you what you watching the box. Yeah, the box down here will tell you what dimension you're at, you know. I failed to point it out while I was doing that, but it was down there, okay. But you could have just typed 12 in also. I could have typed 12 in, yeah. yeah. Well, I just, it'll also line up with the previous line. With the previous line, yeah. It will, it will snap to the previous line, okay. Now, that's a, a base, and I can draw a bunch of other rectangles, but instead of doing that, I'm just going to use the push-pull tool now, right here, okay grab that surface and start pulling it up, all right? And it's 3 and 17, 30 seconds. I'm just going to type in 4, all right? So now that, that side is 12 inches by 4 inches by 3 quarters, all right? That's maybe the side of my box, okay? Uh, I don't know if we got time. Uh, yeah, let me do this real quick, okay? Say I want to put a side in here. I, I'm rotating around, and actually uh, there's another tool here that's simpler to draw rectangles and squares if you want. Right here, it's called rectangle. I don't have to draw four lines. All I do is pick one point, and by the way, <coughs> that's telling me the point that I'm starting is the end point of this, all right? Because it gives me a little dot there and tells me that's the end point, so I can just click on that and it's asking me to pick the other corner, all right? And in this case, I can just type in comma. Well, I can type them both in. Let's see, let's go four comma three slash four. Four inches by three quarters, okay? Easier than trying to pick this stuff off the screen is typed in the dimensions. Now I can use the push-pull tool, and I can actually get my cursor over here. There's the midpoint, by the way, of that line. So it's telling me, I keep going, there's the end point. So I've got the two top surfaces aligned now. Okay? And I can continue this process, but there's one thing here that's non-obvious, okay? And that is, if I start modifying something here, this stuff is glued together. I can't modify one thing without affecting something else. Okay, like for instance, let's just say I click on this line here. Oh, I want to. Uh, escape always gets you out of something. Just hit the space bar. I'm not sure, not escape, the space bar gets you out of a tool without completing the operation. Just remember that, that'll save you a lot of agony. It did something you don't want to hit the space bar. <laughs> It'll quit, all right? So what here, what, that's the select tool up here, the little arrow up there in the right-hand corner. So let's just pick something here, like that line, and then I'm going to, this is a move tool, okay? I'm going to move that line. Look what happens. Why is it doing that? Because that edge is glued to this one. All right. I can't modify one part without uh, having the other without having the other part glued to it. Okay. Reason for me telling you that is you can get all the way to the point of uh, having your box built. Okay, and then I want to pull the side out and the front out so I can dimension it. Guess what? You can't do it because it's glued together. Okay. So. I hate to throw this at you at, at an early uh, point, but it'll save you a lot of agony. What you want to do is, instead of doing this the way I did it, okay, I'm going to start a new one here. I didn't want to save it. Can you back up or undo an operation? Oh, yeah. Matter of fact, you can go all the way back or even easier. Uh, Select tool, by the way, has a box function, and I might as well show that to you. If I go from left to right, it picks everything that is even part of it in the box, okay? But 
On the other hand, and by the way, the way I got out of that was just click my uh, left hand mouse button. If I go the other way, it only picks stuff that's fully in the box. So you get a different function whether you go left to right or right to left. All right. Uh, if you see something strange, it's probably because you meant to do this. I meant to pick everything. All right. And then I just hit the delete button. It's gone. Okay. Or optionally, I could have just kept hitting the undo button here until it all disappeared. All right. But it would have taken several undos. Or can you put it all back now? Okay. Yeah. Hit Control Z. You can put that back on the screen. Yeah. yeah. Did you have a blow-up tool like where you had your bookcase? out in different uh, sections for, like your face frame was over here, and can yeah. you just pick a blow-up tool and it separates yeah. mm -hmm. it? In fact, there's a window blow-up tool where you, it works like that select tool. It uh, gives you a box, and you expand the box, and it, everything that's inside that box will be blown up full screen. From that yeah. picture that you had up there a minute ago, if you want to modify it and make wider corners, yeah, I saw where you picked up the one line, you lifted it up, and you put it at an angle. How would you do that afterwards, or do you have to unglue it so there? Well, you need to, if, to really easily modify stuff like that, you need to generate it so it's unglued to start with. Yeah. Okay, and that's what I was well, Can you hit control Z and bring it back up there for a minute? Yeah. There's actually a redo Not here. Redo. But, yeah. Yeah, but uh, that's grayed out for some reason. Yeah. Yeah. See where the meet up on the corners there, if you want to wire that and put it over there, can you grab the one edge and turn it? Or you have to yeah. In fact, you can. Uh, there is a protractor tool over here. It's right here, and I can put that protractor tool on one of these edges. Yeah. And I can get a reference line at 45 degrees, so that when I modify that line, I can get it actually snapped to that 45 degree line. Okay. I sort of get ahead of the game. Yeah. Uh, that's fine. And uh, in this case, uh, instead of selecting it all and deleting it, I'm just going to do undo. And you can see it's backing down through the whole thing, all right, to the point that I want. If I went one too far, I hit redo. Right? So you can go up and down, up and down, all right. And one of the reasons is I'm going to triple click on this. I can actually use the select tool and do this, all right. or Instead of using the select tool, I go one, two, three clicks. You highlight the whole thing, all right? Then I go uh, right click, make this a component. I'm going to name it something like front. Create it, okay? Now, the thing about components is they don't stick to other things. When I define that side, I can do it the same way I did before, but the front and the side aren't stuck together now. So I can modify the front or modify the side separately without having it stuck to something else. Okay. So I mean that's one of the keys to using this: make things components as soon as you can. All right. Yeah, Gary. Okay. Uh, that using that component can you say you're gonna uh, build a, a, a shed and you want to use a series of two by four eights. Yeah. Can you make a 2 before 8 and then use that component to plug all, plug, rather than going in and drawing every one of those? Yeah, but it's, see, actually in that case it's easier than that because there's actually a component in the default components as a frame. So you can drag that in from the side and place it in your screen and start modifying. We can also do a ra an array, can't you? Yeah. Well, well, you you can forward and say put them over to here, well, I mean, I can, space. for instance, I can copy this as many times as I want. And in fact, uh, next thing I wanted to show you really was a move copy tool, which is right here. See this little uh, double crossed arrow here? All right. That's the move copy tool. Now, the default is to move something. All right. If I click on that, I'm actually just moving in space. All right. I'm going to hit the space bar to get out of that. If I uh, hit my move copy tool and I hold down the control key, I'll make a copy of that. If before I uh, finish, I put slash comma a number down there in that box, it will make that many copies. Okay. I'm not going to do that because I only want one. 
And by the way, this is uh, 5 and 31 30 seconds apart. I'm just going to make it like uh, 6. All right, you saw it shift slightly. Now, one thing that's also non-obvious at this point is those two are linked together. If I do something to one, it'll be done to the other one also, all right? Because they're linked together. Like if I put a rabbit on one end, it's going to show up on the other. But it will be on the opposite side. In other words, if I put a rabbit here and I look over here, it's going to put it on this edge. One of the tools is they're parallel to this green axis, so I can just go flip along green. Didn't do anything visually, except it flipped that part around so that if I start doing something to one, it'll uh, be on the inside, it'll do something inside of edge of one, it'll be on the inside edge of the other. It's a mirror. It's a mirror <laughs> image, yeah. You need to, now you'll need to name that component back to or something like that? Yeah, and in fact, uh, what you need to do, first of all, is uh, uh, make this unique because if I uh, want it to be a separate component, I have to make it unique. And all I did was uh, left click on, I got it selected and I left click, make it unique, okay, and then I can, uh, I think you have to explode it also, all right, and then I should be able to make that another component and call it back because the, the association with the first one if I want it unique I have to sort of explode that assembly because it's really an assembly and then give it another name okay now the disadvantage of doing that is if I do something to one it won't automatically happen on the other all right in fact the real key is if you're going to put in dados or rabbits or anything like that, do it on the original before you copy it. All right? Then when you copy it, you'll see it facing the wrong way, and then you just flip it, okay? And then they'll be facing each other, okay? So that's really the way you want to do things. If I'm going to put some details in that front piece, I want to do it before I actually copy it because then it'll be a identical copy, okay? Like the sides of a bookcase, I'm going to put dados in them and a rabbit at the top. I do that in a f one side first, and then I copy it and flip it. Yeah, right. I just want to mention one thing. One time, I had, a, a, I mean, in the class, I had a good bit of trouble figuring out which way to flip it. Because to me, it seems like you flip the needle on the blue axis, which is up and down. Uh, but whatever way you move that component, yeah. pay attention to what axis is actually moving on, and that's Let's, what you're flipping on. Let me, I've, I failed to point this out. Let me uh, make another copy of this, okay? I'm not going to use it. But as I make that copy, again, it's giving me a clue. You see that black line? That's at some arbitrary angle to the first one. If I keep moving that and all of a sudden I see it turn green, mm -hmm. I know it's parallel. All right, see how that axis turned green? Mm -hmm. All right. So uh, now I know those are exactly parallel. But that green axis is the one I want to flip around. All right? That's how you remember what axis to flip around. Is whatever direction I copy it in, that's the axis I want to flip the piece. Okay? It's not necessarily what you visualize in your head. It's, it's the way the software wants to do it. Yeah, and I'm, I'm not going to use that, so I just hit the undo button to get rid of it. Okay? Now, I want to put some sides in here. Okay? It's taking longer than I anticipated. Now, I can do it from this angle, but again, I'd rather blow this thing up, okay, and probably move it over some so I can see things better. And this is a key. Blow up and pan so you sure are you picking what you think you're picking, all right? Because this uh, uh, rectangle thing, If I go in one direction, it'll be in that bottom plane. If I go in the other direction, it's in that plane. All right? If I was zoomed too far out, I might not even see that. I'm actually putting my face on top of that face if I click now, which is doable. You're allowed to do that. That's how you get a dado or a rabbit. So I go up this edge, click on the top, and then use my push-pull tool to get a rabbit on that edge, all right? But instead, what I want to do is 
go down here and put in a side, okay? Now, again, if you look, it's giving you clues. It's saying on edge, and that edge is parallel to this one, all right? And the dimensions right now are five and a quarter by 55 60 fourths. Again, I don't want to change the five and a quarter. I only want to change the thickness. I just do comma three slash four. In other words, I'm accepting the first dimension, but I'm changing the second one, all right? So you don't have to put in both dimensions. If the first one is what you want, fine, then put the comma in the, the second dimension, because I want this to be three quarters also. Now, again, I want to use my push-pull tool, but I want to uh, zoom out and uh, pan a little bit so that I can see better, okay, that's this surface because I want to pull it along that edge. And again, when I get to the top, it says end point, end point, end component, and I just release it, okay? Otherwise, it might be above, or it might be below that edge if you're not watching, okay? And again, I'll uh, get my select tool over here, the black arrow, and I'll triple click on that. Uh, I was going to make that a component, but I want that, don't want that other one. Uh, okay, Ricky, uh, how Control select. Group in the box. Well, it shouldn't have highlighted this one because that's a separate component. Is that, uh, it, is that a point where you made that unique and exploded, maybe? Yeah, I probably want to explode it, but it's not giving me that uh, option. What if you rotate it more on the edge and use a window just to pick that in? Go from right to left and just Control. choose the line the other way. Right. There you go, like that. I mean, left to right, right? Yeah. Just uh, use the lines you used to make that. Yeah. It doesn't get them all, though. You have to be really cautious about that. So rotate it so you want to straight down on it. Yeah, this is the kind of thing that I can't uh, ever remember exactly how you do it. Uh, see there, those two pieces are glued together, and that's my exact issue right now. Those pieces are glued together, and I don't want them glued together. Okay, so when I clicked on it, though, what I expected to see is the ability to uh, explode that, and I don't see it. Explode is like... Push the board back down so you have the rectangle again or undo it till you get to that point. Yeah. Make that back part of the component. Uh, yeah, let me just back up one more. Okay. There you go. I'll make that. Make sure it's component. I thought I did, but I, I probably skipped that step. Yes, I did. You typed it, but you must not say. Well, what I probably did is not hit this create button. I found myself doing that several times. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, why isn't that a component? <laughs> it's because I failed to hit that create button. <laughs> In fact, you can check over here, by the way, where it says components. I see the ones that I've created, okay, over here in the list. And in fact, there's some others, but I won't get into that. Okay, there's some default components there, like the frame I was talking about. Two by four frame is one of the default components in it. All right, now I should be okay. Yeah, here's the problem, see, I can't see that edge. So I want to be on that edge, okay? Comma three slash four. This is what I mean about use it or lose it. <laughs> I played with this several times and uh, I kept getting into this problem and then I realized I'm failing to make things components so they're stuck together. I don't want them stuck together because I won't be able to move them separately, all right? Now I should be able to uh, do the push-pull and bring that up. But again, you want to be over here on this edge if you want it aligned. See the dot? If I go higher, I don't see a dot. Or then you click on the top of the other surface and make it the same as the other you surface. You just sort of have to drag it to there. Yeah. Okay, now I, sh I should be able to, whoops. <laughs> see what happened? I'm still in the push-pull tool. Yeah, Hit the space bar. Got rid of it. Okay. 
<laughs> now I want to make that a component. This time I remembered. Okay. There you go. Didn't ask me for a name. Make component. It's supposed to come up with a window. It is a component. It is a component. Yeah, but I didn't name it. Call it component. <laughs> it's new. Yeah, it automatically created something. It's the newest thing you made. <laughs> you can rename it right there. Yeah, but I'm not sure which one it is. That's not that well, one. I just loaded SketchUp last night and I was looking at some of the videos and they have some really good videos on there and how to use it. Oh, by the way, if it is a component, you can open that component window and drag a new one into your uh, window. That's the reason I know it's a component, because I was able to pick it out of the screen and drag it over. Okay. That's another way to make multiple copies. If you already got a component, you can open that component window, click on that one, and drag it into the screen. You know. So, Could you just put that on the other end? Yeah. In fact, what I'm going to do is spin this thing around. Just click on it. That's the way I know it's a separate component. It, when I click on it one time, it highlights the whole thing. All right. Then I do my push, uh, push pull tool. Okay. Oh, I don't have that one active. I want my uh, move copy. Hold down the control key because otherwise it's just going to move it. Okay. And that's not where I want it, okay? Just move it down here, and then you can move it. Yeah. Again. Well, that's not really necessary, so. Yep, not the wrong tool. Okay, when you do this, the easiest thing is to have your cursor down close to a corner where you want to uh, control this, okay? Now, if I watch okay uh, I can get it on the edge it's easier to grab it after you move it uh -huh. after you've created it yeah now you can hit the move key and grab it on the corner and line it up don't you line up the purples and the greens or <laughs> that's not what I want okay whoops okay see that's just move because I'm not holding down the control key um, I do that all the time too. <laughs> Jerry, if you hold down the shift key, will it move it parallel to an axis? I don't know. See endpoint and component there? Now I'll hold the control key down and I can align it with that endpoint. All right. You just sort of have to remember that you have to pick a point that you're going to align with some other point. Okay? Before you uh, move it. And that's what I failed to do the first time. I wanted a bottom corner, and I wanted to move it down to the corner of the side of the front piece. All right, and it did that automatically for me. But the first time, I wasn't down in that corner when I moved it. Okay, and that's why it was going all over the place. All right, and in fact, I can make this a, a component. See, I had to hit explode because what is it? It's part of that other one. When you uh, copy it like that or, or move it, it becomes part of the other one. So it's actually, they're linked together. So I can make this a component and I can call it uh, <coughs> side two. Is it necessary to rotate the view before you uh, made that fourth piece or could you have stayed in the view that you were in and made the fourth? You could, but it makes things harder. You need to be able to see edges that you want to line things up with. And that's the only reason I spun it around so I can see that inside edge and I wanted to drag uh, that to the corner, the opposite corner. Okay. How much time we got here? I'm running out of time. Anyway, that's the basic process. And the thing about, the thing that's unique about this, okay, uh, is, is I can start doing other things like I can put a top on here. That's just a surface, by the way. But I use my push pull tool and I bring it up, comma. Let's just make that like five eighths. Make 
a little thinner, okay? I can also do the same if I want a bottom. Now, if I wanted to be a little more advanced, I would put a groove in those sides before I copied them so I could put the bottom in the groove. <coughs> but what you can do, all right, it would just, it's just a dado, all right? But let's just say the, the uh, in this case, it's going to be inset inside of the box, okay? Then I have to go push, pull, and I have to uh, move that up. And again, I'll just type in, let's make the bottom uh, one quarter. Okay? Now that's hard to see unless you start pulling things apart. And that's, that's the only other thing I really want to show you here. Well, there's a couple of things I should show you. Uh, Don't you have to make the top and the bottom separate components? Yeah. yeah. Typically you do. So yeah, I can make that the top. Note that I triple clicked on that. Okay? Instead of trying to select it separately from other stuff. <coughs> now what's unique about, and stuff you download off the internet should already be components. If it is, you can just pull it apart. What do I mean? I want to look at this part separately. I can do one or two things. I can either move it or I can copy it. Keep forgetting, if it's already a component, you don't have to triple click on it. You don't have to click once, okay? <laughs> and if I hit the uh, move button and I don't do anything else, it's going to move it out of the way, all right? That's not really what I wanted to do, okay? What I want to do is make a duplicate of that. So I'm going to hit the move button, hold down the control key, move it out this way. All right, if I'm watching my clues, I can move it parallel. See the green line? That's really hard to see, but there's a green line connecting the two faces. Okay? And I can do this one. Oops. Space bar. Yeah, space bar. Save you a lot of agony. Just remember that. One of the best tools in there is hit that space bar. <laughs> Gets you out of all kinds of trouble. Is that the same as escape? That well, escape only uh, stops the operation that you're doing. Doesn't complete it, in other words. But it, the tool's still up there. Okay. Whereas space bar actually closes the tool. Right. So, you know, I can continue this kind of thing. And this is how you get a, a exploded view of something that you've built. And basically how I did the uh, pieces of that cabinet. And you see how that's jumping around? Well, the clue I'm looking for is the blue axis in this case, because we're moving it vertically. As long as I see that blue axis, I know it's aligned with the original. Whereas if I move it off of there, I don't know where that's at. <laughs> you know, it'll still be the same size, but it's way in the background somewhere. Okay. And I can continue that whole process. And what's unique about this now, by the way, here's Zoom, uh, zoom out. Let me see everything on the screen right there. All right. So handy, I zoomed handy, in. Handy. I want to just zoom back out. What? Handy, handy, handy. Handy, handy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> zoom out. That <laughs> real good. Yeah. Uh, see, I still. You have to watch your screen. I still had that move tool up there, and I started to do something else, and it was I was still in move. Okay. But just to give you an idea, and I'm not going to belabor the point, because I want to show you a couple of things I downloaded off the internet, okay? H is pan. <coughs> Over here, remember the, the uh, tape measure? I can do one of two things. I can align it with one corner. See, it says end, com end point in component. Click, move it down to the other corner. In the box, it's telling me that's 12 inches, and it's also telling me it's 12 inches down here. Okay, now I want to know what this, this dimension is. Uh, it, in the box it says four inches. It also says four inches down there. Okay, so I can sit there with tape measure and just measure things. In fact, I didn't really have to explode it to do that, okay? What's more uh, useful to me in any way is the dimension tool over here. Okay, I get instead, it's right beside the tape measure and the dimension tool, I pick up 
end point, I'll pick another point and slide it out. I'm still in the dimension tool, so I pick this point. Whoops. I thought I wanted to move the dimension itself. Okay, and I can even do it over here if I really want to, or in my bill of materials, I just say this is three quarter inch stock. In it. Mm -hmm. And uh, I can continue this as much as I want. All right. And again, I'm just going to show you a couple of them. Got the measurement room. How did I get, how do you get it to print it short on the, on the screen? Uh, right here. See, I've got my mouse over there. It says dimension. Whereas this one over here is just tape measure. It won't put anything on the screen. I can measure things, but it won't put anything on the screen. All right. Whereas the dimension tool, I can not only measure it, but I can actually put that dimension on the screen. Can you not have it do that while you're drawing it, so that it's just there already? Not that I know. Of. Can, can you put let me it? let me comment on that though, because I've uh, I've dealt with engineering drafting tools before. If that shits on your screen, part of my French, and you're trying to draw, it's garbage, and it'll garbage up your whole screen. You can't even see anything after a while if it's doing it automatically. <laughs> So, in my personal opinion, you're better off waiting until the end to put all that other stuff on there. You know? mm -hmm. Plus, you can control where it's going. If it's doing it automatically, it's, it's making the decisions about where it's going. Can, can, can you do multiple layers like you can yeah. on that? Yeah, you can. I wasn't going to get into that, but you can have layers. Yeah. So, if I do the dimensions on here, and then later on, you know, I uh, stretch the box, can I go back and look at those dimensions? They also stretch. I think so, don't yeah. they, Ricky? It'll, it'll change because what you're stretching is a component. Yeah. And when you change that component, it changes all of that copy of that component. So yeah. if you stretch it back, it'll, it'll change the dimension. I tell you, before you, oh, never mind. Go ahead. Go ahead. I'm sorry, I'm done. I'm just showing some. I, I was just going to say, you remember when you were in grammar school and you had to learn your multiplication tables and your tables and stuff like that? That's really what this is. The real power of this is going to the library and getting examples of something very similar to what you had and offering it. Yeah. Because you can go get a raised panel door off of some cabinet. You know, you use a cabinet maybe, but you don't want to spend the time to draw the raised panel door. But you have to know how to bring that door in from that somebody did on the internet. Bring it in, get rid of everything but that door if that's all you want to use. But you have to learn how to change that for your use, and that's what you use constantly. Yeah, and people like Freud have their bit profiles out there, so you can download a bit profile and draw a molding. Hmm. All right, and I'll show you how to do a simple one before I quit here. Anybody else need a copy? Do you have a question? No, I've, got, I've got a question here. Uh, you haven't talked about it, and I, I can't, I'm just going to sketch up some stuff, but my background is basically an AutoCAD microstation. Do you have to save this as you go along, as you do in AutoCAD, or no. is it constantly saved as you're... It's constantly saved, and that's the only reason you can do those undos many levels back. So yeah. if, you wanted, if you wanted to have a drawing that you kept, but you still want to call yeah. it up and maybe modify it, you need to copy that drawing, because but you in, can't, unless you want to undo a thousand times. But in that. the end, when you're done, and you go to exit, it'll ask you if you want to save it, and ask you what you want to call it. But how? Yeah. Otherwise, so you save it as another. You save as another name. Right? Yeah, some whatever name you want. Yeah. Sure. You can go in, saving as you go along. Cool. You can go cool. into an old drawing and just get a component out of it. Just save the component. Sure. Copy paste. Yeah, right. Are the components unique to this drawing, or can you have a, a library of your? You components? can have a library. Okay. In fact, you can save your libraries. So you can you can create it once, then use it over and over and over again. Yeah. In fact, I haven't shown it to you. Let's say now I want a 24 inch box, I can actually scale this whole thing by a factor of two. You know, the whole thing will blow up by a factor of two. You got to select the whole thing first and yeah. then blow it up. Dimensions. You said, if I, if I caught it correctly, that you can automatically uh, have it do the dimensioning as you draw? No. No. Not that I'm aware of. Oh, no. Yeah. 
if a person was doing some segment ball turning, I'm sure there's a program that can figure all that with angles and dimensions and everything also. That, yeah, that topic came up in our class, and uh, his comment was, Turners don't make drawings. <laughs> but I'm saying, yeah, you can actually do a profile. You can actually draw a profile and rotate it to get something like a bowl or a vase. Now, the only place I can see that really useful is these, uh, is people who do segmented stuff. You probably use this to plan your segment. The tool you use there is called Follow Me. Yeah, that's what I was going to show you before I quit this example is there is a excellent tool in here for uh, creating profiles on edges okay and what I want to do first of all is I want to get this arc tool okay and I'm going to blow this up so you can see it I'm going to pick that end component and this one up here okay and I'm not being very precise here okay and I create that arc now what's unique about that is there's a follow me tool okay right here wait hold on this little tool here that yeah. says follow right. me okay okay, okay. Choose the top. Uh, i think it works even without doing that oh uh, no it doesn't that's right because it's a component you're right ricky i have to tell it i want to edit that component since i already made it a component i double clicked on it you see the uh, outline of that. Now I can edit it because you actually have to open a uh, component for editing. Okay. In fact, it was telling me when I had it over here, it said, No, 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 you can't do that. Select the face to extrude. Uh, that's not the right face. Oh, I know what it is. You've got to choose your edge. No, I, the edge is not part of the component at this point. Remember, I didn't edit the component to start with. Oh, yeah. And what I really want to do here is delete that edit, that one. Open the component for editing. That's the only drawback to making things components to start with. Is you can't, you have to actually open that component before you can edit it. Okay. Now I should be able to do it. See, it wasn't picking that surface before. Now drag it, drag it. Being careful about where you're dragging. Although in this case, I'm just doing well. Okay. Yeah, cool. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, here's the unique thing. It's the reason I mentioned that uh, some people like Freud have their uh, router bit profiles on the internet. You can download that profile, put it right on your edge, use that follow me tool, and contour your edge to the, their yeah. router bit. Yeah, that's cool. How about fills? If you've got any box, can you put different uh, fills in it so it looks realistic? Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, by the way, the only one that comes by default with uh, SketchUp is there's uh, all right I'm trying to figure out where it is there's a uh, paint bucket I knew it was there <laughs> paint bucket these are defaults okay but you can download uh, representations of other things off the internet like the there's OSB board if I want to make my box out of OSB. <laughs> yeah. uh, most of these are flooring. Okay, uh, one, that's plywood. Okay, yeah. well, the one I'm looking for is cherry. Okay, because these are separate components, I have to really click on each one to get it to color them. Now you can get other wood species off the internet, you know. Uh, the only one that really comes are the ones, uh, by default, are the ones you see there, you know. Yeah. I noticed you have to choose the direction of the granny. 
Yeah, yeah there's no brain in that. <laughs> Talk about but, by the way, if I wanted to do this, there you go. Now I'll put a granite top on my box. My box. <laughs> There's all kinds of stuff out there, believe me. I mean, you can take this about as far as you want. So, uh, I only did something this simple to give you a, uh, a feel for how you do something and some of the tools, okay? But what I want to do is show you, like I said to start with, you do not have to reinvent the wheel, okay? Uh, these are all ones that I that we did in the class, but I also have under GWA I've got SketchUp plans. These are ones I've downloaded off the internet. Okay, some of these are rather esoteric, and some of them are, are something that you might want. Like here's this. This came from one of the woodworking magazines, a Stickley magazine cabinet. There's a preview of what it's going to look like. All right. And I open it and it brings it in okay mm -hmm. now if the person that created this did it right then these are individual components I can find out right away if it's a component by clicking like on that side mm -hmm. all right <laughs> and I should be able to uh, use a push pull pull and bring it out so that I can look at it what okay. Well, you use your uh, tape measure. Okay, there's that corner. There's that corner, and it's, uh, whoops. Nine and three quarters. Nine and three quarters. Like I said, you need to zoom in, though, to make sure you're picking the right corner, because that's not really the corner. Yeah, it's nine and three-eighths. Can you yeah. turn off that wood right now, so that you can see it better? Uh, yeah, uh, but you can also do something like uh, if you really want to see the uh, inside instead of uh, copying it like I did. Uh, I've got the tape measure tool up there. Just pull it out. Whoop, that's the push. It's, it's making it thicker. <laughs> you, you just uh, I forgot to pick up the uh, move tool. When you're changing one, remember you can make Maybe it wider. You can't use the move tool. You have to select it first. Then yeah, that's right. Because it's a component. Space bar. Yeah, space bar. I need to select, select it first. It's going to move. Right. I'm still doing it. Yeah, it's still doing it. Uh, triple click on. Get rid of that. Triple click on it. It's picking the whole thing. Oh, both sides are part of the same compound. Oh, okay. That's what the problem is. Yeah. yeah, that's what the problem is. I'm trying to move it, but both sides are part of the same compound. That that's not good planning. You you should make each side a different compound. But that's that's typical of the kinds of stuff you might download uh, off the internet. You know. Yeah. And you can change the size of any of that. Yeah, you can change it. Yeah. Can yeah. you scan something in, or say a picture? That was the next thing I was going to show you. Okay. Uh, what about scroll work on that, Jerry? <laughs> chip, chip card. Be my guest. <laughs> <laughs> I want to show you this. Uh, Will and I did a class one time on scaling furniture from a picture. Okay, and uh, there's a graphical technique for doing this. It's based on some basic drafting techniques where you can uh, get your perspective view and you can project your lines to the uh, uh, basically infinity where the lines come together and then start uh, laying out uh, dimension lines on this kind of stuff. But, as was pointed out to me, you don't have to do that anymore. You can... Uh, that only took about four or five hours to do what? The old way. Yeah, the old way. It's, it's tedious, yes. Instead... The beginning of this ain't faster. Uh, <laughs> I can draw it faster in the beginning. But it's fine. It's, it's happening. 
I believe I must have put it in my pictures. I'm trying to find a picture I had stored of a box, I mean a bench. Question is, where did I save it? <laughs> so Jerry, does this also drive your garage 3D printer? Well, it drives my printer at work, but uh, I don't know about uh, all of them. You know. <laughs> so where did I put that file? I have a file of a bench somewhere that I downloaded off of a uh, plan. I mean, I scanned it. You can bring in as a JPEG file. I just can't seem to find it right now. Where in the heck did I save it? Do I ask your guy, JPEG? Well, I got bunches of JPEG files, so I get a huge. But you can just take any 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 picture, just kind of scan it in there, and then you can work from there. Yeah, as which is what I did. If I can find the thing. Anybody see a JPEG file there? Is no. it called Bench? Yeah. Is there John Bench? Yeah. It's only looking that directory. Okay, here. Really should have written down where I uh, where I stored it. <laughs> Documents and settings. Administrative <coughs> recent. Man, that's not. <laughs> Why would it be there? Documents and settings. Administrator <coughs> This is this is uh, always a problem with uh, computers. Probably not the other. <laughs> 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 In my case, it's always the user, but you know, sometimes you want the user. I use three different computers. Okay, why Still on the scene. Be smart, be smart. There it is. <laughs> Holy mackerel, I need to do uh, I guess I have to actually, uh, no, sorry, import that. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Ah, it is there. Huh. I don't know why I didn't see it the first time. All right, it comes in in that base plane, but uh, what you can literally do is move it anywhere you want. And uh, this rotate tool up here, uh, what I found is you have to be in real close to use this thing. <coughs> I don't want it flat like that. All right, so I want it to go in to vertical. I want the other plane. You got a little on the red line. Huh? Below the red line. Well, it's not going the way I want it to. I should be able to spin this thing up 
vertical. Move the picture up above that red line. Well, that might be the case, but anyway. I'm not sure if that'll work anyway, uh, even if I can't get it to flip. So it's just a 2D representation is the problem, so it doesn't have any. Click on the red line to see if it'll fit. That was the fourth thing. Get a top view. That's what I'm trying to do. But anyway, oh yeah, these are default views, by the way. This is a top view. I, I just do it that way. But here is what you do. You start with your tape measure tool. And you can literally measure stuff. Okay, that's 19 and some some odd inches, most What's likely. That it's just a point on the picture. Really neat. Oh, it's, gonna, it's referencing it's proportionate to everything in that picture. Okay. Yeah. I got it. Now, if you really didn't think that bench was 19 inches, <laughs> you thought it was 30 inches, you can scale the whole thing by. 30 divided by 19, or whatever it was. Okay, so this is just not, nothing more than your your guessing. Okay, at a particular dimension. Let's say I think this bench is three feet wide. Okay, just tell me it's 19 inches in this picture. Okay, so if I think it's 36 inches, I would just say, uh, okay, I want to scale it. I want to scale it by 36 divided by 19, and whatever that is. Can you show us yeah. that? Uh, if I remember how to do it. Let's see, where's the scale thing at? Do you remember, Ricky? What's that? Where's the, the scale, scale function? Uh, I haven't even used it yet, to be honest with you. Yeah, there's one of these icons is a scale it's function. There. Oh, here it is. Find it. Yeah. It's right there. Well, I guess I have to pick something beforehand. Select a grip. I expected it to ask me. You really need a good front on view for this to work real good. Yeah, you're looking at a perspective view, you have to realize. So some of these dimensions are not going to be exact. <laughs> but it can get you close. Oh, well, I see. Whoa. That thing's really touchy. <laughs> Uh, it didn't ask me for a oh here's the scale factor down here I didn't notice it in the box I could have typed the scale factor instead I was doing it on the fly I see how close I got I probably didn't even get close because I wasn't watching what I was doing 38 <laughs> I came pretty close <laughs> all right just by scaling it up and scaling it down okay uh, the guy at the top of the class, he does this all the time with right? yeah. He oh, goes, yeah. take a picture, take a few measurements, and he can go back to the shop and copy a uh, heirloom furniture that's, you know, 150 years old. And get yeah, and uh, they are literally, uh, in fact, uh, Robert Lane talked about this. They are literally have been taking pictures of furniture, bringing it in and knowing one dimension like the width of the table or something like that, scaling the whole thing and taking dimensions off of there from SketchUp. They're not going to be exact, so you just have to say, okay, that style is not one in 3164, so it's most likely two inches or two and a half inches, you know, that kind of thing. So if you can, you, if you can take one measurement off the original, if you can publish take one that, measurement, then you'll you have use that for the scaling, yeah. yeah, yeah. More than one's better. <laughs> okay, I've got a bunch of models here, but in the interest of time, we'll, uh, uh, any other questions? Yeah, Bob. How about importing and exporting to other programs? I think you have to have a professional version to do that. Uh, let's see. Let me bring you some more. Delta CAD too? Delta CAD's a 2D program. They wouldn't even recognize this stuff. Sorry. We just think it, it ain't gonna happen. Okay. Let's see if I get choices here. What choices I get? Uh, you can uh, export this stuff to a 2D graphic. Get Pro 3D exporters right there tells me that it's in the professional version. <laughs> oh, by the way, too, if you want to print this stuff, you have to be in 2D. You have to change this. 
you can't be in three dimension on print. You have to change your right here is where you would change it. So you can't printing perspective view. Yeah, you can because I did it. I uh, can't find it now, but uh, that box model, I actually printed the thing just by clicking on print. You know, it did printed what was on the screen. It's a perspective view. But, you know, I don't know what I did with those plots, but I did print them. Yeah. Any other questions?